Are you sure? We can still go back if you want. He whispered in his wife's ear, staring at the bustling garden where his family gathered to dine together. A disapproving look crossed her face, and she turned her head to glare at him. No, we are not leaving. And why are you reiterating the same thing time and again? Annoyance was evident on her face. Because my cousins and their overly sweet mothers are here, I don't want you to become a victim of their never-ending chatter. He scrunched his nose in distress. She couldn't help but chuckle at his buffoonish antics. Come on, Jemin, they can't be that bad. Besides, it's my first time meeting your extended family. Let me enjoy it. He blew out a sigh and nodded. With their hands entwined in a gentle grip, they stepped into the garden, instantly gaining the attention of the people present there. Oh my, my children are here. She exclaimed, happiness glowing on her face. Stepping closer, she embraced them both. Jimin and Wyan shared a glance and smiled. Parting away from the hugs, she smiled at them. I'm glad you both came, otherwise Jimin used to diss this gathering every year. Of course, mom, we had to come. I am so excited to meet the other family members. Come with me. She dragged her towards the lady gang. Jim sighed and shook his head. The affection his mother had for his wife amazed him. At the same time, filled his heart with warmth. The two ladies of his life shared a beautiful bond. What else he could ask for? With a smile as across his face, he made his way to where the men of the family gathered together. Wyan found herself sitting between Jamal's cousins as the elder woman went to see the dinner preparations. She squirmed on her spot, feeling uncomfortable under their judgmental gaze. Though she met him at her wedding, it was a small interaction that barely lasted a minute or two. So, we heard that you and Jamal fell in love while working together, is that true? Wyan smiled and nodded. Yeah, I was the head of the marketing department and he took the CEO position at the time. While working on a project together, we fell in love. Her smile widened and a blush coated her cheeks as she relished the most beautiful moments of her life. Oh, you're quite smart. You trapped the boss in just a few months. They both burst into laughter as if they had cracked the century's best joke. Wyan's smile disappeared. She felt humiliated by their mocking remark. Come on, Wyan, don't be upset. I was just kidding. Wyan didn't want to create unnecessary drama. Shoshi forced out a smile and nodded. Wyan, I think you should change your dressing style. I am sorry, but this dress looks awful. I mean, my mother wears dresses like yours. Wyan swallowed the lump that formed in her throat. She had always been insecure about her dressing style, and them pointing out did not just it to her overthinking mind. She glanced at her attire. It was a long knee-length royal blue dress with full sleeves. She bought the dress specially for that occasion and Jiminto liked it. He said she looked graceful. Did he lie to her? Right. You know Jimin used to be surrounded by really hot and beautiful girls during his college days. If not like them, at least try to maintain yourself. Change your dressing style and lose some weight. You know my mother says husbands lose interest in their wives if they don't look attractive. Her words triggered Wyan's insecurities. Ever since she got into a relationship with Jemin, she never felt the need to groom herself to be liked by him. Neither before marriage nor afterwards, it made her feel that she needed to change herself in any way. The reality check she got from his cousins hit harder than any other time. She felt a sting pain at the back of her eyes as she tried to hold in the saltiness. A trembling hand reached out to tuck her hair strands behind her ears. Sucking a good amount of air, she tried to maintain her composure. However, that next remark shattered her remaining self-esteem. And do something about this too. It looks really bad. She pointed at the area around her eyes which was hyperpigmented, resulting in dark circles. It's not like she never tried to cure those, but they were genetic, something she couldn't fix even she wanted. Those dark circles she inherited from her father were her biggest insecurity. She had grown up with people pointing it out every time as if she was out of their race. Her classmates used to make fun of her. Thus, to avoid the humiliation, she tried every remedy but they just didn't go away. So she started concealing them with makeup. Everyone, dinner is ready. Come on, let's dig in. Hari and Gigi wasted no time in rushing towards the dining table, leaving her grappling with her inhibitions. 
Let's go. She flinched out of her thoughts when she heard Jamal's voice. Blinking away the tears, she looked up at him and smiled, or better, tried to smile. However, Jamin appeared to sense the sentiments hidden beneath her smile. With a concerned frown asked across his face, he clasped her palm between his and gave a gentle squeeze. What's wrong? She shook her head in negation, her lips twisting into a robotic smile. Nothing. Let's go and join the others. Saying so, she thrust towards the dining table with Jimin kneeling behind. Though he wasn't convinced by her words, he shrugged it off thinking he was exaggerating things. The dinner was a lively affair with shared laughter, unforgettable memories and hearty smiles. Amidst all the happiness scattered around, Wyan found herself struggling between the quagmire of her inhibitions. The harder she tried to get out of it, the denser she submerged into it. Are you sure you are fine, Wyan? He whispered in her ear, prompting her to move her eyes at him. She bobbed her head and faked a smile. Till that time, she forgot the count of fake smiles she passed here and there. Then why aren't you eating? Is the food not good? You know we can sneak out of here and order some food of your liking. Raised his eyebrows, asking her opinions about his plan. His smile broke out on her lips, this time a genuine one. No, the food is good. Then eat. She nodded and started eating. Everyone was done eating. They were indulged in some conversation and having ice cream alongside. Vaya sat silently, staring into oblivion while Jamal's gaze was fixated on her. He was trying to figure out the reason for her sudden change in demeanor. He counted the days in his mind. It wasn't her that time of the month. In fact, it was nowhere near that time. On top of that, she didn't eat how much she usually eats. She was just playing with her food, having small bites only when Jamal looked at her. As much as he wanted to ask her about the issue, he didn't want to involve his family in between them. So he let go of the thought and decided to wait until they got home. Hey, want my share of ice cream? She looked at him and shook her head. I have mine. Her reply made him even more curious as to what had happened that she refused to take the dessert. Maya stood in front of the body-length mirror only in her undergarments. Her gaze raked all over her body, her mind preoccupied by the words said by Jamal's cousins. Their words left a great impact on her mind that she had started seeing herself through their eyes. She regretted not wearing makeup for the night. Her dark circles looked awful. They were right. I have to lose some weight. I don't look attractive. She murmured, looking down at herself. It was not like she was overweight. She was in a healthy shape, not the ones models or influencers flaunt on mass media. But again, our society is greatly influenced by them. A slim body, fair and flawless skin and hairless body are what they call an ideal beauty. However, it is all an illusion. Perfection doesn't exist in the mundane world. It never did. They are some so-called stereotypes which do nothing except intensify people's insecurities and their perspective towards their bodies. Sighing out loudly, she shrugged off her thoughts and decided to sleep. She extended her hand to grab her pajamas but halted midway. I need to change my dressing style. Leaving her usual cotton pajama, she opted for a short silk nightie which she bought once but never wore it. It had thin spaghetti straps and it reached to her mid thighs. She was not used to wearing such kind of short attire, thus she pulled its hem, trying to stretch it to her knees. Merging out of the closet, she came across a very adorable sight. Jimin was lying on the bed. He was trying his best to stay awake by scrolling through his phone, but his attempts proved futile when the device slipped from his hand and landed on his nose. He groaned in pain and instantly put the phone aside before he could crush it into pieces. Vyan couldn't stop herself and burst into heaps of giggles. The embarrassment or the uneasiness about her outfit was long gone. Oh, you came? Come to the bed. I'm sleepy. His lips parted as a yawn escaped his mouth. She nodded and hopped on the bed beside him. He was quick to throw his limbs around her. Vyan, he commenced after a brief moment of silence. She hummed, closing her eyes in ecstasy. Did something happen there? 
Did someone say something to you? The heard clenching thoughts, which were suppressed for a moment, flooded back all her again. She gulped and shook her head. She didn't want to make him worry unnecessarily. Are you sure? Because your behavior says otherwise. I am telling the truth, Jim, and nothing happened. I, I felt a little bit nervous around them. He peered at her eyes to receive with the truth behind her words, but she was quick to give a sly smile and hid her face in the arch of his neck. By the way, you didn't tell me how am I looking. I wore a new nightdress. She changed the topic before he could start an intense investigation on the sad topic. You look amazing. Liar, you didn't even notice what I was wearing. I don't need to look to find how you are looking. No matter what you wear, you always look beautiful in my eyes. His words felt like a pang in her heart, a beautiful attack which made her heart beat fast and astronomically. However, this time, even he and his sweet words couldn't subside her rising insecurities. Breakfast, breakfast. He rushed inside the kitchen, asking for breakfast. Why shook her head witnessing yet another episode of her husband being late? Here, she forwarded his breakfast towards him. He stuffed the food in his mouth as if he had been hungry for ages. She smiled in contentment. Seeing your loved ones savouring the meal you prepared for them is one of the best feelings. Where's your breakfast? He asked when he noticed her standing on her spot. Her smile wavered and she desperately tried to come up with an excuse. Oh, I already had it. She internally felt bad for lying but there was no other option. Had it? Without me? Yeah, I was hungry and you were taking forever so... She trailed off, concealing the guilt beneath her smile. I don't mind, at least you had your breakfast. Though her stomach grumbled, yet the sheer desire to lose weight overshadowed her appetite. She was determined to mold in an ideal body shape and for her, it was the best way to get the desired results. Lunchtime wifey, let's go, he exclaimed barging inside her cabin. She shifted her grace from from the laptop screen to him who took a seat at her working desk. You go and have it, German. I have to complete this. She diverted her attention back to the work. He sighed. His hands reached out for her chair's armrest and he pulled her closer by it. Work and wait, but I can't. I'm hungry and I bet you too. Let's go and eat first. You didn't even have breakfast with me. He started whining like a child. It is right when they say a man becomes a kid in front of his woman. I wouldn't have denied it if the work weren't necessary. Please try to understand, German. Go and have your lunch. I'll have it later. She tried to cox him, but he stubbornly shook his head. I'm not eating either. I will wait till you finish. His incessant pestering led her into a dilemma. On one side, her husband was whining for a nice lunch together and on the other hand, her extreme diet plan held her back. German, please, she showed her puppy's eyes, knowing it always works, and it proved right when he hopped in irritation. What a workaholic wife I've got. Fine, I'm leaving, but have your lunch later on, I'll remind you, okay? He playfully squinted his eyes at her, getting an order of of approval from Wyan, he exited the room. Wyan stayed into oblivion for a few moments before she pivoted her focus back on work. German hummed a random melody as he served the pocketed street food on a plate. The last week went by quickly. It was full of hustle bustle as they were working to launch a new product. They were so occupied that they barely got time to see each other. Having lunch together was not in the picture. However, it gave Wine a great opportunity to continue her dieting, but dinners were problem problematic. She couldn't avoid eating even if she wanted to, thus 
she used to eat little and that to salad or something light though jimmy didn't like her eating those leafy things he didn't say anything how would he stop her from eating healthy following the weekly ritual he bought her favorite street food on his way back from the grocery shopping good job wine's husband your wife will be over the moon laughing at his buffoonish antics he grabbed the plate and made his way towards the shared bedroom where his wife was taking a nap after a whole busy week sweetheart wake up look what i brought for you he left a gentle pack on her cheek She squirmed on her spot and slowly opened her eyes. A smile automatically broke out on her lips when his face came in her line of vision. What made my wife tired, isn't it? He glided his fingers through her hair, his fingertips gently massaging her scalp, prompting a relieved sigh from her lips. What did make her tired? Never. Her body felt weak and exhausted due to the extreme dieting. Come on, get up. He made her sit upright and forward the plate in front of her. Here's your favorite thing, stir fried rice cake. Wine's lips twist into a small smile. She just loved him. In an era where people aren't satisfied with the extravagant things, she sought contentment in the small things. I even brought chocolates for you. They are in the refrigerator. You can have them later. Eat it for now. He was everything a girl could ask for, beautiful both inside and outside. But she, did she deserve him? They had no comparison, yet there were they, together and so in love. Amidst all of this, she couldn't forget the war she had to fight. She needed to look presentable enough to stand beside him or people would think she had trapped him. Hello, miss. Where are you lost? Food is waiting or it will go down in my gut. He swayed the plate to and fro in front of her face. She swallowed and shook her head. I can't. I had snacks a while before and I have no space in my stomach for this. A frown edged across Jamal's face. An unreadable expression crossed his face. You sure you have no space for this? She bobbed her head. That means you have no issue if I eat it? She again nodded. He sighed and put the plate aside. Okay, what is the issue, Ryan? I know there is something and you are hiding it from me. Tell me what is bothering you lately. His voice shocked Ryan. How come he said nothing but noticed everything? There is no issue, Jimin. I am a bit tired, nothing else. She sighed and crawled on his lap, nestling herself in his embrace. He stroked her hair, leaving kisses atop her head. His gentle touch lulled her back to her dreamland in no time. Where is she? He asked a staff member who brought his wife to the hospital. He went out of the office for a meeting and in the meantime, he got the news that his wife fainted. So he left everything in the middle and rushed to the hospital. Inside the room, sir, the doctor is checking up on her. He nodded and thanked the person. She took her leave and left. Jimin sucked a deep breath and awaited the doctor to walk out. A few minutes later, the doctor walked out. What happened to my wife? Is she okay? He showered a series of questions, his voice laced with worry. She has been malnourished. She fainted due to the lack of food intake. I have given her medications, but make sure she eats three meals a day. Skipping meals is not good. Jimin was left astonished. She had been skipping meals and he had no idea about it. Since when did he become so ignorant about her? Stepping inside the room, he was welcomed by the sight of Wyan sitting on the bed. As her eyes met his, she instantly downcasted them when he, she noticed a disappointment in his arms. But she was unaware that he was disappointed with himself more than her. You okay? She nodded her head slightly. Shall we head home? She bowed her head. Words refused to come out of her mouth. He stepped closer and stretched his hand towards her. She placed her palm over his and they both walked out of the room.
Van sat on the bed awaiting Jamin, who had disappeared somewhere after they returned from the hospital. She was nervous about how he would react, but his silence throughout the car ride, or even after coming home, intensified her fears. Soon after, Jamin appeared in the room, carrying a tray beholding the fresh food he prepared for his wife. With peripheral vision, Van noticed him walking towards her. He settled down on the bed beside her. Open your mouth, she did as he said and he put a spoonful of fried rice in her mouth. Bite after bite, he fed her the whole meal and she ate silently. All this while, her eyes moved everywhere but him. He wiped her lips with a tissue, prompting her gaze at himself. He appeared to depict the commotion going on inside her head, thereby smiling slightly to ease her worry. Relax, I'm not bad at you. Jamin, I, what did GJ in a hurry say to you that day? He directly came to the point. She looked down, avoiding his eyes again. I'm asking something, Vian. His tone was calm, but equally serious, depicting the gravity of the situation. They say, they say I... She gulped as she felt the pressure building at the back of her eyes. They said... I need to change my dressing style and lose weight and, and I should do something about my dark suckers. They look awful. Jimin wondered why he was not surprised. His cousins were big social media birdies. They were highly influenced by beauty standards and all. So their comments were disappointing but not surprising. But the question arose why he did not notice a change in his wife. Maybe he did but he shrugged it off. He noticed a sudden change in her dressing style, but he shrugged it off thinking she could wear whatever she liked. Besides, every person has their own choices. If she wanted to dress up in a certain way, he was no one to intervene in her personal choices. Above all, whatever she wore, she remained beautiful in his eyes. He noticed her consuming extra time in massaging the area around her eyes, but he overlooked it, thinking she had opted for a new skincare product. He knew only one thing, as long as she was happy, he was happy too. However, he was unaware of the turbulence he was going through. And you believed them? You let their words sink inside your head? He asked, unable to hide the disappointment in his tone. They, they were not wrong though. Jimin gaped at her in disbelief. Are you hearing yourself, Wayne? They were wrong in every aspect, in every way. Who are they to judge your dressing style, your body, your choices? They are nobody to tell you what you should do and what not. You like the way you are. I love the way you are. So why suddenly do you want to change? And that too because certain someone who has nothing to do with you is saying so. She closed her eyes, letting her tears fall freely. Hey, don't let their words affect your mind, okay? See, wouldn't have to you done to yourself. You are perfect the way you are because that makes you vain, that differentiates you from other people. He cradled her face between his palms and wiped her tears. They said you will lose interest in me. She sniffed, letting herself be vulnerable in front of him. What a joke. He laughed humorlessly. I will lose interest in you. This is the best joke I have ever heard. You are not chemistry's boring reaction, nor you are physics out of my head numerical. Then how come I lose my interest in you? Explain it to me. Wan blinked her eyes, processing the reference he used to display his feelings. Physics and chemistry. Seriously? She couldn't help but scowl at him. Well, you know I studied business, so of course science is not my cup of tea. He shrugged his shoulders nonchalantly. Why smiled at how the conversation initiated on a serious note, propagated through tears, and ended with a heartfelt smile. I love you, Wyan, and it doesn't mean I love certain things about you. It means I love you whole. I love you for being yourself. I love everything related to you, things that come from you or things that belong to you. Never let anyone's words affect you again. She nodded and let herself loose in her arm race, the place where she belonged rightfully.